Hey guys, it's Derek from Pacific Coast Auto here and we're taking a look at a 1999 Nissan Skyline. This is the GT Turbo version with the inline six cylinder RB25 engine. And then it's a sedan version of it, so you get the four doors. Most of these are coupes, the sedans are I guess a little bit popular. I actually quite like the look of the sedan version and then you get the extra utility uh, of the extra doors. And so this one was bought from auction. It's going to be sent over to the UK. And you're going to have to pardon my voice. It, uh, I got sick over the weekend and this is my first day back and haven't kicked it yet. So got a groggy voice. This one has 189,209 kilometers on it, which makes it a little bit higher mileage. But the price that we paid for this one was really quite decent. And especially Japanese cars that are in the 150 to 180, 190, 200,000 kilometer range can generally sell for a really low price here in Japan and still be in relatively good condition, as you'll see with the review of this. Engine runs well, clutch works, engine response is good, oil and coolant both good. You can see it's a little bit out, that's because I opened it with my hands. Uh, no issue. Timing belt was changed at 100,000, actually 99,830 kilometers in 2008, so that's 10 years ago. So 89,000 kilometers in the last 10 years. And it looks like the vehicle spent a lot of time on the highway because there's a lot of rock chips on the hood, and the windshield has a few chips, and then a couple of cracks. And I'll show you that when we uh, lower the hood. This is a stock strut tower bar, and then the Neo 6 version of this engine puts out 280 horsepower. And so it's a decent, uh, decent engine for the rear-wheel drive version of it. And so the, the GTRs are four-wheel drive with the RB26 engine. This one's an RB25 with the rear-wheel drive. And it feels nice and decent and fast. And this is a really good feeling and good handling car. And since the GTRs have been going up in value so much, these ones are following. Generally speaking, like an average version of the uh, ER34, which this is, you're looking to spend about a million yen. Uh, this one was less than a million because of the mileage. But I think that we got uh, pretty lucky with the condition for a lower priced version of it. Okay, so let's go around the car now and take a look at it. First off, auction sheet. Pardon me for being Mr. Sniffles. 1999. Oh, I'm going to translate this auction sheet. This is the points from the seller and points from the, uh, the auction inspection. Now, this one's been in an accident. And the accident seems like it was fairly large. It was at the front, also requiring some, uh, da or having some damage to the rear, which I'll talk about. It's uh, all documented here. And other than the accident, there really isn't that much damage. And then the accident, like I'm looking at the lines here, they're good. They're not perfect, but they're good. And we've seen a lot worse accident damaged vehicles that were in smaller accidents. So I believe that this one was repaired fairly well from the accident. All the doors open and close appropriately. And um, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with owning this car having known its history. And so also keep in mind that a, an accident repaired car doesn't mean a salvage title vehicle or a write-off vehicle here in Japan. It just means that it has been repaired from an accident, however small. But uh, I'll read these and then you'll get to understand. So uh, 1999 Skyline GT Turbo or 25 GT Turbo. 2.5 liter engine, auction grade R, interior C, comes with sunroof, which is a cool little thing to get on a Skyline. You can get the sunroof on all of the, like, 32, 33, 34. Um, it's not that common, though, on any of them, really. Alloy wheels, power steering, power windows, airbag on this one. Original pearl colored paint, and the pearl paint looks really good on this one. Don't have problems with uh, fading, fading paint and that sort of thing. Okay, GT Turbo, these are the sales points. GT Turbo and Toll Collection Box for Japanese Highways. Comes with history papers from 1999, 2002, 2003, 2004, 2006, 2008, 2010, 2011, 2014, 2000, uh, 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016. All of these are the inspection because every two years in Japan you have to get the car inspected. And you'll notice that some of these are one year and that means that the vehicle was probably sold to a dealer. They deregistered it and then re-registered it after May because as a dealer you have to do that or you have to pay taxes on it. Because Japan's weird that way. Have to pay taxes on cars even if it's in a dealer lot. Yep, still has registration on it. Speaking of which, this car still has registration on it. You see the, the plates right there is the city name. The 300, there's the type of registration that it has. And then you get the number there with a one here again, a letter there. 
this is just a regular plate it's not a custom plate like some people some people will get like a 34 for an r34 car okay front accident repaired door mirrors scratched you can see there steering wheel wear and peeling it's pretty bad but a lot of these skylines are pretty bad because nissan didn't know how to make a steering wheel for about 12 to 15 years um, their old cars are fine and their new cars are fine but in that yeah peeling steer steering wheels uh, TCS off and slip lamp are on. Those are your traction controls. They may have been intentionally deleted um, because traction control, especially old traction control, kind of sucks. Various scratches, dents, and repairs. Left and right front door visors area has tape marks. I'll show you this now. This area here has a carbon fiber weave underneath and it tends to fade pretty badly. Um, typically, yeah, I think those might even be aftermarket, the carbon fiber underneath, but I don't know, it's been a while since I've had a four door of these in, so I can't remember if that's a stock original part, because the rest of the car is all stock, including suspension and exhaust and wheels, so that's probably stock as well. I have seen that the company Nismo makes inserts that go into there that have carbon fiber on them, but I'm not convinced that uh, this one has the carbon fiber Nismo pieces. Okay, what else do we got? Wheels scraped, actually really badly on this one. The rest are fine, but this one's really badly scraped. And look, they were pulling up to the curb and they were like, ouch, 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 ouch. Like they didn't stop after the first one or two hits. They're like, nope, I'm going to continue going for it. Oh, and the tires are 2013 and they're worn down to almost nothing. So time to change those. Okay, rear panel dented. Um, uh, that's accident damage. Spare tire, house dented, core support replaced, left and right, front inner panel dented, and then um, I already uh, mentioned about that. So there's your accident damage there, and then if you take a look, the front fender, the hood, and the other fender there have been replaced from the accident. Front bumper is, it says misaligned, so I'm just going to show you. And it's not really that misaligned, you can see. It actually looks to be pretty good. So that's nice, and I do like this little lip on it. Oh, and intercooler in, intercooler out. This vent here is only on the one side because that's your uh, exit for the intercooler air. Okay, repainted section here, A3 and Y2 here, Y2 here, so that's a cracked piece on both sides in the exact same location. Kind of weird because I have never seen that before. Right here, and it looks exactly the same on the other side too. Okay, and I think that's everything, so let's, uh, yep. So the body, like no dents on it, and almost no scratches. There are some uh, scuffs on the front bumper that I will show you. But it looks really good. Good condition paint, no dents, and then you can dance in the shower because you paid a really low price for this compared to most of the ER34s. And the good quality but low price ER34s are very few and far between. And you have to be careful when you watch a video like this and you're like, hmm, maybe I'll buy a car from Japan at lower than regular price and then get a deal. I would say a deal like this is a 1 in 200 chance. And if you're looking for a deal like this, there's a good chance that you're going to end up with a really bad condition car because most of the people looking to spend little amounts will low bid everything. And low bidding is a recipe for getting a terrible car because all the good cars are usually bought up by people like dealers here in Japan that only go to one auction house ever and they buy their stock vehicles from there and they'll generally bid pretty high on any vehicles that they can see themselves because their chance of markup is pretty good if they can see the car themselves. And this system leads to low priced cars almost not existing. Only if you're super duper lucky. Just don't go and expecting to be super duper lucky because that's by definition not possible. Okay, good looking rear end on these. Everybody loves the Skyline rear end. And then stock exhaust. That's cool. Rear wiper. Let's go inside here. This tape is on both sides. Kind of a weird way to cover it up too. It works though. Okay, regular door cards. Regular ER34 stickiness is on here. It disintegrates over time. Foldable mirrors. 
Okay, here's the steering wheel, it's badly peeling, have a look. Okay, and then seats, and they're in really good condition considering almost 200,000 kilometers. These seats are pretty prone to ripping on the outside bolster. I'll show you where in just a sec. But no cigarette burns, not really any sagginess on this section here, but they'll typically rip right here. You can see it's a little bit threadbare, but it's actually really good compared to most of them. Okay, the seat doesn't clip in, so it just kind of floats here. It usually has a piece here to lock it in, but that piece is gone. I don't know where it went. Speakers in the A-pillar, that's cool. And you get this aftermarket looking triple gauge thing. It's got your boost, your oil temperature, and your voltage of all things. Kind of weird. I mean, voltage is nice to see, but I think a lot of people would prefer it would be like oil temp and water temp instead of voltage as well. And then the boost gauge there doesn't, it's not as accurate as an aftermarket one would be. Ooh, stock CD player and tape deck. That's cool. No bad smells inside the interior. This is worn out and this is worn out. Some glue here. And smart buyer taped something to the, or not buyer, seller, taped this onto here just to show everyone all the history papers that it came with when they sent the vehicle to auction. Not caring at all about the next owner having to clean the glue off of that. It was duct tape too. Not cool. This is a bug. I don't know what it's doing. No, it's not. Oh, yeah, it is. Whoops. Sorry. Okay. Headliner. It's good. I'll show you the trunk, and I'll show you the back seats, and I'll even get in. So the Skylines aren't large sedans. They're fairly small sedans as far as four doors go. So you don't get an awful lot of leg room in here, but it's not 80s Japanese size. And so you actually can have legs while you're sitting in it, which is a benefit because everybody wants to have legs. Cup holders are easy to access. And what a fun car this would be to go in with four people in the mountains in Japan. Just rip around. The only downside is the guy who's driving is having a lot more fun than the people who are driving with him. And you better hope that the person who's driving is a good driver because there's nothing scarier than driving Japanese roads with people that don't know how to drive at the wheel. Okay, trunk has some uh, spots here of badness. But there's no rust underneath. Oh, and this is something that should be mentioned. A lot of these ER34s have bad rusting problems. Uh, this is kind of weird. With um, inside the trunk, which this one has none of, they rust right here for some reason, and then it, like, it'll leave a line down there, so be careful of that. And then they'll rust on the suspension struts up at the front. And uh, this one doesn't have any of those, despite the higher mileage, but it does have foggy headlights a little bit. And it does have gorgeous ER34 looks. So, that'll be the end of the report here. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed seeing this ER34, because I always do. Uh, and I do very much like these four-door versions. Okay, so that's going to be the end of the review. If you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.